Hi again, everyone. Gary Digital Williams here on the Boxing On About Way Podcast Network. And the Boxing On About Way Podcast Network can be heard on many different platforms, including likes of Spreaker and Stitcher and Podcast Attic and Google Podcast and iHeartRadio and TuneIn and on Spotify as well. So anywhere you can go, you can listen to the Boxing On About Way Podcast Network. This week's going to be a relatively short podcast. Um, I'm going to give you some results that, c- that came in over the last couple of weeks and also some updated schedule. We gave you the schedule last week, but some uh, bouts came in the last moment. One of them went pretty big, too. We'll talk more about that as well. And um, and finally, I'm going to give a tribute to a man who uh, recently uh, passed a big milestone I just found out about. And uh, I just wanted to uh, give homage to him because he meant a lot to me over my life and my career as well. So we'll talk about that as well. The Box on Boatway Podcast Network brought to you, as always, by Real-Time Pain Relief. From boxers to ballerinas with shoulder pain and muscle strain, everything in between, Boxing Lawn and Beltway recommends real-time pain relief. Natural, plant-based, safe, fast, and effective ointment. You go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of real-time pain relief. You get a free $10 tube of real-time pain relief now indoors by two-time world heavyweight champion Big George Foreman. So try his knockout formula for real-time pain relief. Rub it on. The pain is gone in real time and by deborahspears.com she always has great weight loss tips great jewelry and great training methods at deborah d-e-b-r-a spears.com we had a number of results come in this week as far as uh boxing and a lot of it coming down in the south part of the country and so this, this is interesting to talk about that first of all Baltimore, maryland featherweight glenn Desern. he picked up another knockout victory back on saturday december 11th Scored a second round TKO over veteran Pablo Capul, Capul excuse me, of San Diego, California, by way of Merida, Yucatan, Mexico. That bout took place at a convention center in North Charleston, South Carolina. Knockout came at 250 of the second round, and the win was the third straight for the Zern, raising the record to 12, 2, and 1, 8 KOs. Capul loses for the sec- sixth consecutive time. His record falls at 10 and 32. Five KOs. So Zern is kind of retooling his career right now. He had a one loss and uh recently and then he's coming back and he's fighting these bouts. And of course, COVID has now allowed him to get too many really big bouts. So uh been tough to um come back on that. But uh, again, another win for Glenn Zern. By the way, he found some news on his wife, uh, WBC featherweight champion Franchon Cruz Zern. She's scheduled to return to the ring in January. Uh, will not be a title fight. It'll be a non-title bout, but uh, she'll be turning to, to the uh, ring in January. So we look forward to that as well. So big win for Glenn Desern. On that same card at the convention in North, North Charleston, South Carolina, Oxen Hill, Maryland welterweight Akeem Action Action Jackson. He scored a first round knockout over Jakari the Riddler Ross of Charleston, South Carolina by way of Fort Knox, Kentucky. Now, I had a chance to see this as manager Tony Hamilton uh, sent me the uh, video, and boy, he landed a beautiful straight left hand, Jackson did, to knock out Ross at the two-minute mark. Really, really great, great win for uh, Akeem Jackson. Evens his record now. He's 2-2, two and two, two of his, his two wins by knockout, and Ross is now 1-1 one and one with one KO. So congratulations to Akeem. Action, action, Jackson of Oxen Hill, Maryland. Meanwhile, on Saturday, December 12th, Undefeated Baltimore had, had three boxes on this card, and uh, actually one of them I didn't know he was going to be on this card, so it was a it was a good good re- uh, revelation for me. Undefeated Baltimore Maryland heavyweight Cassius Cheney scored a third round knockout over Jason Ironman Bergman of Birmingham, Alabama. That was on Saturday, December twelfth, at the Champion Boxing Gym in Jonesboro, Georgia. Now, according to reports, Cheney stalked Bar- Bergman for two rounds, and he dropped him with a barrage of punches in the third round. Bergman beat the count, but he was floored again by another big right hand, and the bout was stopped at 223 of the third round. Cheney is now 20 and 0, 14 KOs. Bergman falling to 27, 19 and 2, 18 KOs. Cheney picking up some good wins, taking his time, and again, uh, everything is going on around us has 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 stopped everybody's growth, so to speak. But uh, Cheney's plugging along, and hopefully within the next uh, year or so, he could have a title shot. We'll see what happens. Meanwhile, also in the card, cruiserweight uh, Moosin Kaysen, the younger brother of former heavyweight world champion Hasim Rockman Sr., he scored a second-round knockout over Curtis Head. Curtis Head is out of Inkster, Michigan. 
And that win took place at 38 seconds of the second round. So big win for Moosin Kaysen, remaining undefeated, 7-0 with four wins by knockout. Curtis Head falling to, um, his record falls to 5-6 and six with three KOs. And also on that card, I didn't know he was actually going to be on this card. A uh, man by the name of Torian Venable. He's out of D.C. He's a welterweight. And he scored a second round TKO over Anthony Dave. Anthony Dave, um, he was out of, guy was fought here many times here in the Beltway. He's out of Canton, Ohio. And he won that battle 237 in the second round. Uh, Torian Venable uh, fights for the first time since December of last year, 2019, almost uh, to the day that he fought Anthony Dave again. In uh, Vienna, Virginia, he won a four round unanimous decision that bout. So Venable is now two and one with one knockout. Anthony Dave falls to one twenty one and one, and uh, that's an interesting uh, record. And a matter of fact, let me let me just uh, go on a tangent just for a quick second. Uh, the WBC, the World Boxing Council, and its president Mauricio Suleiman came up with a actually he. He kind of uh, bounced back. And I'm going to talk more about this maybe a little early part of next year. I'm not going to talk about it today, but uh, about how we have to stop doing these mismatches. And uh, through Greg Serb, who's the chairman of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, Serb put together, and I've met Greg Serb, very nice man, um, put a long list of guys who are just, just in danger of being harmed and have awkward records and they guys do i think they trying to say that shouldn't be fighting anymore a number of boxers that we've seen here in the beltway i won't mention the names at the moment but I, I believe anthony dave was on that list but be as it may i'm talking more about this a little bit later on because i understand where they're going with it and i agree with it to an extent but at the same time seeing them in person a lot of these guys makes it a little difficult we'll talk more about that uh, sometime next year. Cause I do want to, I do want to talk about that. It was a very interesting uh, subject there. So now we go to this week and a number of updates on the schedule here. And one big one's coming up on Saturday, December 19th. And this is a nationally televised bout that features Antonio, another Russell out of Capitol Heights, Maryland, the Bantam way he's undefeated. He'll be in a scheduled 10 round bout against former world champion, Juan Carlos, baby Pacquiao, Payano, of Miami, Florida, by way of La Vega, Dominican Republic. That will be held at the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut, and will kick off a Showtime telecast triple header beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, this uh, triple header is pretty good. Jerome Boots Ennis, one of my favorite boxers from out of town. He'll be on the, uh, one of the headliners of the bout. Or the, he'll be at the Kofich, I believe. Also, another guy who won't be on the car, but I love watching him. His name is Brandon Lee out of California. He'll be on that card. But uh, Russell is 17-0, 12 KO. He last fought on February 8th, and he won by six-round disqualification over Jesus Martinez in Allentown, Pennsylvania. As I said, Russell, 17-0, 12 wins by knockout. Now, the Russell family, and I haven't had a chance to talk about this because I just really found out about it this week. But um, the Russell family is really going to be under a heavy heart this week because of the recent passing of their younger and one of the non-boxing brothers in the Russell family. He was he was Gary Russell as well, but he he was known by Busa. And I never met him. I don't remember ever meeting him personally. <clears throat> but he passed away this past week, and uh, it's been been a tough week for it for the um, for the Russell family. I did talk to Gary Russell Jr. and of course express my condolences, but uh, just a really tough situation, man. So there'll be a heavy heart going into this bout for Gary Russell Jr. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary Antonio Russell. Meanwhile, Payano's 21 and 4, 9 KOs. He'll be trying to break a two bout losing streak. Payano lost by 12 round unanimous decision to Daniel Roman back on September 26 at the Mohegan Sun Casino. Now, Payano was a former WBA bandweight title. He held about two years. He uh, fought and then he won and then lost to Rache Warren for the uh, bandweight title. So that'll be coming up this Saturday, um, December 19th, at the. Um, excuse me, at the Mohegan Sun Casino in Uncasville, Connecticut, and it'll be on a Showtime telecast that'll get on the way at 10 p.m. 
Meanwhile, this coming Friday, tonight, as a matter of fact, December 18th, Brandon Bulldog Quarles out of Alexandria, Virginia. He's a middleweight. He's returning to action. He takes on Laurel Alcantar, Alcantar of Agua Prieta, Sonora, Mexico. That'll be about scheduled for six rounds at the Gimnasio Profit Cross in Agua Prieta. Quarles is 21-5-1, 10 KOs. He's not fought since March of 2019 when he lost an eight-round split decision to Aaron Coley back on back in Oxon Hill, Maryland at the MGM National Harbor Casino. Alcantar is 9-9-1, 1 KO, but he's 0-6-1 in his last seven bouts. He's coming off a second-round TKO loss to Hector Nava on November 24th at the uh, him, at the same location, the Gymnasio Profit Cross. So that's coming up Friday, December 18th. Brandon Bulldog Quarles uh, getting ready to take uh, take on uh, Alcantar. Name again is uh, Laurel Alcantar. Excuse me. Uh, and that'll be at in Agua Prieta in Mexico. Also on the car, also on the bouts coming up this weekend, Saturday, December 19th, called Larry Hitman Pryor, taking on Talik Taylor at the Escape Ballroom in Greenville, South Carolina. Also the pro debut of Lowell Maryland middleweight Manzabori. He's now known as the Punisher Conde. And he'll take he'll take on Ricardo Vasquez Becaril. Uh, Range, North Carolina, because Cardi making his pro debut on this card. Now, we saw the weights for the Saturday, December 19th bout featuring Ashton the Goon Sykes um, against uh, Alex, uh, Alexis Espino. Now, we didn't see the bout when weights came out. That bout was not on the list. So, I don't know if the bout's taking place or not. It just, or they just didn't go that far for the, they just did the bouts for the pay per view. I don't know. So, we'll see what happens. We'll keep you posted on that as well. So that's scheduled uh, Saturday, December 19th at the Alamo Dome, San Antonio, Texas. The uh, BD, one of the bouts scheduled to be on the undercard of the Canelo Alvarez and Callum Smith card uh, coming up uh, Saturday in San Antonio, Texas. And again, I, I told you it going to be a short podcast, but I do want to pay tribute and give honor, I should say, to a man that has really been a big influence on my life over the years and He's a guy that 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 uh, reached a very good milestone. Uh, his name is Rudy Child. I think I've mentioned him a few times when we talked about Boxing Spotlight, the TV show that I once did with uh, my brother-in-law, Charles James, and, and Jerome to fight Dr. Spears. My family's involved, and Rudy's family was involved. It was really an interesting, interesting time, a great time for us. And hopefully, in the very near future, you'll be able to see some of the classic episodes of Boxing Spotlight on somebody streaming service we'll see what happens but i i i want to mention him because number one while he was with um doing a doing boxing spotlight he was also working for amtrak and today i found out through his wife Lori that rudy Childs retired after 41 and almost almost 42 years of service at amtrak he retired uh today uh today yesterday was also his birthday by the way and he, he a lot of things are going for him i have to give him a call after i finish this but uh also he um written a book uh some of it, he's done some outstanding documentaries mostly resulting down uh, the music industry he's done a lot of great documentaries surrounding the music industry and he's written one on that and uh i forget what exactly what it's called but i'll, I'll get that information to you but uh he's done some outstanding work and i know he's going to do some more in the future and i'm really proud of him proud to say he's a very good friend has been a very good friend of mine for many years and he's doing very well so i just want to salute my buddy Rudy childs retiring in amtrak after 41 and a half years written book and also uh doing some work for for getting some of the classic episodes of Boxing Spotlight. And, and I do want to talk about that also real quickly because we've lost two of the venues that helped Boxing Spotlight be what it was. Um, two, the two, two venues have closed over the last week or so. One venue was LaFontaine Blue, which was in Atlanta, Maryland. And LaFontaine Blue... Uh, was the place when so many of the early broadcasts, broadcasts before I even joined the group, um, they were when uh, Panama Mike Payne, the originator of Boxing Spotlight, was on the group, was in the group, 
was in was on the show and he did a number of interviews from Lafontaine Blue and they used to have a number of boxing cards in um in Lafontaine Blue in Atlanta, Maryland. So we lost that uh, location recently. I I don't know if it was COVID related or whether or not because it wasn't wasn't a whole lot of business there, of course. But I'm not sure whether or not the COVID actually caused them to close the uh Close that facility. I saw a lot of the early bouts there in uh, Atlanta, Maryland. And then we found out earlier, before we even found out about LaFonda and Blue, we found out that the legendary Michaels 8th Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland, closed its doors after 30 years. Um, now, this was based on they lost the lease. The, the, um, the owners of the property decided not to renew their lease, and that was... That was that. It had nothing to do with the COVID or anything like, that, anything like that. And I didn't know who was running it after Scott Wagner passed away. So I don't know who was running it at that time. And I know they had some amateur bouts. Jake Smith used to do amateur bouts there. But it'll always be known for the ballroom boxing cards that were just tremendous at uh, Michael's 8th Avenue. One of the, again, many people called it the best club show on the East Coast. Some even call it the best club show in the country. It was that good. It was really, it was really special to be there on a on a regular basis. And I used to go there on a regular basis and cover the shows. And we did the first boxing spotlight. Did the first uh, telecast of that of the uh, Michael City Avenue shows. But it was phenomenal. It really was a phenomenal time. And I'm gonna miss that place. No question about that. Um, just just a great great place to watch boxing. The atmosphere was unbelievable. It's unlike anything that we've ever seen in this area. And uh, all we have now is the memories, unfortunately. Sad to see that. But I just wanted to point that out as well. So, yeah. So, again, congratulations to Rudy Childs. And also, um, again, farewell, um, Michael State Avenue, as well as LaFontaine Blue. Well, that'll do it for another edition of Boxing on the Beltway Podcast Network. Once again, the podcast network brought to you by Real-Time Pain Relief. You go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of Real-Time Pain Relief, and get a free $10 tube of real-time pain relief. Again, endorsed by two-time world heavyweight champion Big George Foreman. Try his knockout formula for real-time pain relief. Rub it on. The pain is gone in real time. And by DebraSpears.com. Great weight loss tips, great jewelry, and great training methods at Debra. D-E-B-R-A Spears.com. We wish, wish you and yours a very happy holiday season. I know it's getting close to that Christmas time. So thank you once again for supporting us. And always remember to keep supporting the best boxing in the world, the boxing along the Beltway. I'm Gary Digital Williams. Take care, everyone.